So, it turns out that it's rather tricky to reinstall the rear seats on a Nissan Micro K11 when the door lock is frozen and you can't get in. Oh dear. Welcome to Cast by TV. Right, well, as of now, I can't even get the key in the lock, so I'm just spraying the area with liberal amounts of de-icer. In fact, let's put some on the key as well, shall we? Why not? And now, hopefully, <laughs> it still doesn't want to go in. Just a little bit. Come on. Get in there. Let's try a bit more. I don't want to force it in, because then if I break it, I'm in for a world of pain. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, it's in, but it won't turn. A bit more de-icer. Come on. Oh, simple things, isn't it? No. <sighs> ah. Maybe. Yes. Okay, good. So it got down to about minus four last night, hence the ice. It's now nearly lunchtime and the temperature is just above freezing. So the Primera, well, well that one is dethawing reasonably well because this is sitting in the sun, at least to some extent. The Corsa though, well, <laughs> that's just a, a big green blob of ice. And there's the little Micra missing its rear seat. And that's parked rather close to the Corsa, so I need to move this one out the way. But I don't really want to use what little de-icer I have left defrosting this windscreen, so I'll just stick my head out the side there. It will be okay, I'm not gonna move it far, just over there somewhere. Right, well, I've moved the micro a bit as well and indeed emptied it. So we have a bit of room to work. And I think what we'll do first is reinstall the base of the seat, the bit that sits horizontally down there. But it's been a while since I took this out, so I'm gonna to have to jump in there and remind myself how to install it. Should be simple. All right then, let's figure this out. So the base of the seat has to sit something like that. And yeah, we've got this metal bracket at the back here. So that's gonna to have to go into a hole down here somewhere. Where's that gone? Is that it? Yes, that's it there. And look, I left a bolt in there as well. So I haven't got to go hunting for that. That was a rare moment of good thinking, wasn't it? Right, what else? Um, oh, there was a clip at the front of the seat. Yeah, that's it. Oh, come back, you can't escape from me. Yeah, that metal curvy clip. Now, as I recall, that goes into a hole down here somewhere. Yes, there it is. And all that's replicated on the other side of the seat. And then we've got to shove these belts through various holes. There's one of them. Is that it? Sort out the underlay. Yeah, okay, right, well, let's get that done then. All right, can you see okay? Decent camera angle? Good. So <laughs> we'll put the underlay back first and this has to go a certain way to fit properly like that. I suspect, and now, the seat and I'm going to shove the belt through before I even think about bolting into position, clipping it into position, because that will make life easier. 
he says with some optimism. Come on, through you go. There we are. And there's one more under here somewhere, which goes through that slot there. There we go. Now, we've got these clips at the front, haven't we? So let's just push that into place. Line it up with a hole at the back. We'll oh, better check that one as well, didn't I? Okay. That sounded promising. And now that should line up reasonably well with the holes, which, which at the moment it isn't, so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery. Hang on. <laughs> right, jiggery pokery has been completed. <laughs> The problem is that whereas I'd remembered to push these red seat belt buckles through these slots in the car seat, I'd forgotten to also push through this lap belt. So that was sitting underneath the seat here, stopping it sitting flush and causing various woes. So if we look now at the hole in this rather rusty metal bracket, we can see that it lines up much better with the hole underneath in the car itself. So in theory, we can now take the bolt and, he says, with tremendous optimism, pop it in. Now, where's my ratchet gone? Over there. And this bolt, if you're curious, is a 12 millimeter. Right, so that bolt's in, so on to the next one. And just a moment to get off camera, the postman turned up and he's left us this. And I'm hoping that it's a cabin air filter for the Nissan Primera, that one over there. It's about the right shape and size, wouldn't you say? We'll have a look in a minute. And then we'll know for sure. Right, okay. Making progress. Right, well, let's have a look, shall we? I'm assuming it's a cabin air filter, although I have ordered quite a few bits and pieces recently because we have some birthdays coming up. No, that's definitely a filter. Blueprints.com. Yep, okay, good. I'd like to fit the filter to the primary now because it's only a quick five minute job, but nonetheless, I should focus on what I've started. Otherwise, we're gonna have a whole load of half finished tasks. So what we need now is the vertical back support of that seat, which is currently there. Right then, let's see what we're dealing with. Now, as I recall, yeah, that's right. We got this black metal bracket here, which pivots so the seat can fold up and down as if by magic. And that has a couple of holes in it there for bolts. Can you see those? So the bolts go through there and then into some holes in the back of the seat, which as I recall, yeah, that's them there. And of course, it's exactly the same over here on the other side of the seat. And as for the bolts, well, for once I haven't lost them, and that's because they're stored in my magnetic parts tray. And this thing really is worth its weight in gold. I know I've mentioned it before, but it really is fantastic. If you want to keep track of your bolts and nuts, it is a godsend. Now, are these bolts 12 millimeters like the other? I hope so, because then I won't have to change the ratchet. Yeah, that's fine, 12 mil. And look at that. Doesn't the car look so much better with its rear seat installed? I am absolutely delighted with that. And look, it is securely held in place all the way along. I've also checked the seat belts are working properly, which they all are, and they also lock in place. 
exactly as they should. I don't like this lap belt in the middle though. Lap belts aren't particularly safe, so I wouldn't let anybody ride there. So what do we need to do now? Well, I need to put some of those bits and pieces away. They're not all from this car though. Some of those things are from the Vauxhall Corsa D, which is over there, dethawing nicely. And there's also a tire See that tire? That's from a Mazda 2. It's a damaged tire, and I have a plan for that at some point. Now, I'd also like to give the battery a quick charge in this car. It is starting it all right, but it is nonetheless a little bit sluggish, but I'm not sure I've got time because I have to go out in a few minutes in my faithful Nissan Primera P12, which has been my loyal companion since 2010. Right, I've just about got time to put the battery on charge. So I'm going to hang the charger up there. Plug it in. So, oh, hang on, we'll tangle up with the extension lead. It's always when you're late, you get later, isn't it? Uh, there we go. Okay, so positive to positive, negative to negative. Plug in the charger. Set the right mode which is on now, and off we go, right. So there we go, that's all for today. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to CarSpire TV. Subscribing makes it easier to find my other content. Can you also please do me a favor and click like on this video, and I'll see you next time. Farewell.